What better way to kick off 2020 than with a brand new gaming PC? What I have in front of me is a kick-ass do-it-all computer that's perfect for 1080p gaming at high settings in the latest titles, whether that's Fortnite, Battlefield 5, or maybe Apex Legends. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything inside this PC, show you what it all does, what's good, what's maybe not quite so good, and I think this is a really good video actually for those of you that maybe haven't put a PC together before. It can get quite confusing with PC components. There are so many different model numbers. Some are high, some are low. And you almost need to know which components to prioritize. And if you are gonna take something out or maybe get something that's a little bit less expensive, you need to know the consequences of that. So the gaming computer that we have here is built inside the Pure Base 500. This is from Be Quiet and I actually really love this. I first saw this at Computex last year and it did change a little bit since I originally seen it. And the thing that's so good about this is it's a very budget friendly case. You've got tempered glass, you've got decent airflow on the front, but it's not actually all that expensive. And when you sort of touch it up and down, I know, to me it's the sort of case that I think you could maybe start off with and put some cheaper components inside, but then as you work your way up and you spend more and more money on your PC, it's not gonna look out of place and you're not gonna need to get a new case to sort of reflect the more premium um, aesthetic, I guess, that you might be after. Because as you can see, you can kit this thing out with a load of RGB and it will still look awesome. I probably should have taken this tempered glass off before I actually started this video. This would have made all of this a lot easier. So the most important two components inside any computer is gonna be the CPU and the graphics cards. And these two are very important because they pretty much dictate the overall performance of your system. The processor or CPU or central processing unit is gonna sort of dictate pretty much the overall performance of everything. Don't worry, it's just gone to sleep. It's just gone to sleep. This was all part of the plan. And the graphics card is what I would always focus on first. And if you are actually building a new gaming PC, I would actually find what sort of graphics card you want to go for before doing anything else. So to do this, it's really simple. Just decide what games you want to play. Look at their minimum or recommended specifications, the resolution that you want to play it at, and then Bob's your uncle, you can find the graphics card that is gonna meet those needs. So this one here is the Radeon 5500 XT. It's certainly not a budget GPU. I mean, back in my day, I know it wasn't that long ago. I'm talking about, I don't know, 10 years ago, a budget graphics card would be under 100 pounds, but this is almost double that at around about 180. But in today's money, this is very much more of a budget friendly, anyway, uh, graphics card. So this is gonna be perfect for 1080p gaming at high to ultra settings, as well as maybe some 1440p, maybe medium settings or high settings if you're playing something a little bit older. Which brings us on nicely to the processor. And these two things actually work in tandem, and especially something like Battlefield 5, you need quite a good processor to be able to run the game, otherwise you'll find that you might get some choppy frame rate here and there, and you might get a bit of stutter, and this is often because the CPU can't actually keep up with the graphics card. So just because you're getting a really expensive graphics card, let's say, it doesn't mean that you can just put any old CPU in there. So it's about finding the right balance between these two components for you. We're using a Ryzen 5 3600 CPU. And this is actually a six core processor, so it is gonna be very useful for doing a whole host of other tasks. But this one is the X version, the 3600X. And this brings us on nicely to where I would say you could actually make a little bit of a cut and get the normal 3600 edition if you're just building a gaming PC because in terms of gaming performance, it isn't gonna make that much difference and it can save yourself a little bit of money. And that actually brings us on nicely to the RAM because at this stage, you probably noticed that it's not RGB. I know, boo hoo, but in practical terms, that actually saves us around about $20 because this is still 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM. And you don't need 16 gigabytes for a lot of games, but in this day and age, 16 gigabytes in things like Battlefield 5, for instance, might actually do you some favors. So if you can afford it, I would say get yourself 16 gigabytes from the off. If you're a little bit borderline, then just get yourself a single stick of eight gigabytes. And then next month, once you've got your new paycheck, you can get the other stick and then you're in the same position that we are now. But if you do want to save yourself some money, skimp on that RGB and then get yourself maybe something like the RGB fans. So these are the cheapest uh, RGB fans Corsair do, they're the brand new SP120s. There you go. I just happen to have this handy, I'm like a chef. Here's one I made earlier. So this is the SP RGB Pro. Um, and they're not the absolute best fans out there, but 
As you can tell from this video, I've got the microphone there and you can't hear this system at all. And this is gonna give you a great aesthetic. I've put an RGB strip in the side here as well. But the overall thing is not only gonna be quiet, it's gonna be good in terms of actual cooling performance, but the money that we saved from that RGB RAM, we've now pumped into fans, we've got a more complete system. We've also saved ourselves some money in this system just by using the stock cooler that comes with the AMD CPUs. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think it's got a bit of a bad rap. Don't feel like you need to get yourself an aftermarket cooler because of all the components that you can upgrade later, this is free, it comes with most Ryzen CPUs, well it comes with all Ryzen CPUs, it doesn't come with all Intel ones, bear that in mind. But if you get one in the box and you don't like it, guess what you can do? You can just buy yourself the same cooler that you would have bought and pop it on later. This is not going to hold you back in any way unless you want to overclock it day one. Something else that you do have to be really careful with is the choice of motherboards. And this might not sound that interesting. I do sort of quite like motherboards myself, but I still don't find them the most fascinating things in the world. They are almost like a seat, if you like, for all your hardware to sit in. But there are so many different features and so many different compatibility not issues, but things to think about when you're choosing one, it is actually imperative that you do get it right. I wouldn't recommend that you get yourself an X570 board unless you actually need all of the features or you know you're gonna need it later down the line because while this is one of the cheapest boards you can get from X570, it's still around about 60, 70, it's a very loud mo motorbike. It's around about 60 or 70 pounds cheaper um, than this particular X570 board. And if you don't need any of those features, what are you gonna do with that money? You're then gonna pump it back into this graphics card and you're gonna get yourself better frame rate. So already, if we add everything up, we've saved $20 on the RAM from not going for RGB. We saved ourselves around about $30 on the stock CPU cooler. Assuming you got the 3600 and not the 3600X CPU, you saved yourself another 40. And then if you do get yourself the B450 motherboard, again, another 60, 70 dollars, you can see that this all adds up and you can actually get yourself a much better graphics card. And the same finally goes for the SSD. This is so fast. You turn this thing on and it's on like that. Games boot, not instantly, but very quickly. But again, is this really necessary? No, because once you're in the game, you're gonna much, you're gonna value the increased frame rate you'd get from a better CPU and uh, graphics card combo a lot more so i would advise that you get yourself like a budget ssd just to load windows and maybe a few of your favorite games and then maybe a big hard drive or just a larger sata ssd there is a power supply in here it is the be quiet pure power 11 and in terms of power supply if you just go on a website like part picker it should actually give you a rough estimation of how much power your system is going to draw and then you can sort of work out what sort of power supply it is that you need but do remember that if you do upgrade your system a little bit later down the line then you're going to want more power so if if it's saying that you only need 350 watts for your current system, I would advise maybe at least getting like a 500, 550, just because that makes more sense because there are more upgrade paths and more upgrade options you can do uh, a little bit later. To summarize then, this PC costs around about $925 at the time of filming, but if you add yourself a copy of Windows from the Windows Store, then it will come out around about 1,000. And the gaming performance of this thing, which should now start to be overlaid very neatly over my face, shows that this is very much a 1080p gaming machine. These are all high settings, 1080p, and you can use this with like a high refresh rate monitor or maybe 1440p if you're playing more. Not necessarily even esportsy titles, but just not the most demanding titles really that we're showing off here. But 70 FPS is gonna be perfect. This is just an average, so it's gonna be slightly higher or slightly lower depending on what it is that you're playing or the exact thing that's happening on screen at the same time. But if you're just building yourself a gaming PC, then you can see that while you, you can get better components, and I would say this is a very well-rounded PC, you don't actually want to go for a well-rounded PC. You wanna focus on what you're going to use your PC for. And it doesn't matter what I say, it doesn't, wanna, it doesn't matter what, I don't know, Mick down the road says to you or John down the lane says to you, your individual needs outweigh everything else. And so if you're just a pure gamer, you need a pure gaming PC. If you're playing at 4K and you want to play at 4K, you're gonna have to get yourself a 4K gaming PC. But if you're playing 1080p 60, then you really don't need to spend as much. It is as simple as that. But just please sort of do a lot of research into really knowing your components so that when you buy your 
gaming PC parts, when you put it together, you know that everything is going to work not only flawlessly, but you know that everything is going to be tailor-made for you. That's the benefit of building it yourself. You get that choice. You don't have to rely on, I don't know, Sally up the street to tell you what to do. You get the right things for you. And yes, that's a great place to end. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. Get subscribed as well for more videos just like this. And there is a playlist in the end screen of this video. All you need to do is click on it and it will give you a whole host of other PC builds that are a little bit more, I don't know, polished, so we say, and, and uh, probably better purchases. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>